guys, it's T from Driftwood Gaming and I'm here with another tutorial on Effects here. We're going to learn how to do a couple new things today. We're going over chapter three in the documentation as it's found on Effects here website. So let's get to where we left off last time. We'll start with a little square of particles. So we need to move that particle. And we're going, no, we're going to set this to PVA and the speed to 0.05. That's, come on, 0.05, there we go. 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and the deviation of 0 0.05 as well. Okay, now that we got that set up, let's get a few more in there. So we're going to go over to this basic settings tab, and we're going to set this to infinite. All right, now we're where we left off last time. So in this one, we're going to discuss the window tabs a little bit. I think I've mentioned this before, but you, you start with about five window tabs here. If you would like to add some more, you just open one up here and take the window and drag it in here, and voila, it's there. But the documentation mentions using this reset window position, which I found took all my windows that I put down here and like put it back to the default, which I didn't like, so I wouldn't recommend using that. Anyways, let's continue. First, we're gonna put a picture in here using the basic render settings tab. Click load, and we're gonna go into the sample textures that they give you with effects here in the sample folder here just in the basic go to texture and I'm going to use particle 4 yay now we have little balls and we're going to go to the render settings now and we're going to talk about this little section here the documentation mentioned it and it, to be honest it's a little mis oddly translated and it confused me to no end for a little while but what i finally understood from it is it was saying if you have none you can't color it because you have nothing which makes a lot of sense so we use a sprite instead and therefore you're able to color it and manipulate the colors also if you have a colored sprite to begin with it's kind of hard to recolor them so i noticed that the textures that we're pulling in are actually black and white which is pretty convenient so let's look at these other options here we have ribbon you see it turns it into like this weird line thing and then track which turns it into another weird line thing i'm sure this stuff is useful i need to learn how to use it eventually but um ring take turn, turns it into like a ring it's not quite a ring though, it's open on the top. Anyways, um, that's what the documentation was mentioning as far as I can tell. We're using a sprite, I've always used a sprite, and so we're gonna continue on with that. So the next thing that we wanna do is color the sprite. And it directs you to making a random color, which I thought was really cool. If you set this at zero, the min, and the max at 255, it'll give you every color in between randomly. That's really awesome. So the last thing we're gonna look at is something called, in the basic render settings tab, blend. And you could play around with this too. When you're done with your animation, or well, at any point in your animation, this can give you some interesting effects. Let's look at what opacity does. How interesting, okay. And then additive, that's pretty. And subtract, that's dark. Multiply. Okay, okay, cool. I like additive. Very, very pretty. So that's all that this chapter covers. I hope you guys learned a little bit more to use to make your custom animations awesome, as they always will be. And I'll be back with chapter four in no time. I'll see you next time if you like this tutorial and you'd like to see some more. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, like the video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.